I am the Dragon Shenron. I shall grant you any wish. Now speak. I wish for Frieza! Bring him back to life! Your wishes have been fulfilled. Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F, or Dragon Ball Z Revival of F, depending on what country you're in. It is out, it is hot, and this is going to be a review of that shit. It is lit being a Dragon Ball Z fan right now. The new series, Dragon Ball Super, has just started to be released. Everything is going good for Dragon Ball Z. Uh, this movie did not disappoint me. Uh, I'm going to be doing a full spoiler review here. All movies that I review, everything I review in this Nothing But The Truth brand uh, is always going to be full spoilers. And here we go with the 19th Dragon Ball movie, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F. Okay, so basically when I first heard about this film, I wasn't too sure what to think because when I heard what the concept was of Frieza being revived... That was a little iffy to me. It's almost like Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball Z, he had created two really good, well-received villains in Frieza and Cell. And, you know, ever since then, he's just kind of been searching for stuff, but hasn't really come across anything gold. A lot of people like Majin Buu, but a lot of people really hate the Majin Buu saga. So there's always uh, differing opinions on that. And so I wasn't sure about how Akira Toriyama was going to do this, where we're bringing back a villain that was defeated, you know, in the, the first third of Dragon Ball Z, let alone the fact that there's then two full sagas where the characters are increasing their strength. And then, even if Dragon Ball GT is still canon, I suppose Resurrection F takes place before it anyway, although... With some of the events in this movie, it's now looking to be pretty certain that uh, Dragon Ball GT no longer is a canon part of the Dragon Ball universe, and it's now more or less an alternate reality. So basically what happens in the movie is it's revealed that Frieza's empire is still around, uh, but they're struggling pretty bad losing their leaders, Frieza and King Cold. Now, Cooler is never addressed. And all of the Dragon Ball Z films, except for uh, the Bardock, which is more of a TV special anyway, but almost every Dragon Ball Z film does not even fit into the Dragon Ball Z canon, and events in the movie always contradict with what actually uh, certain events in the show. So the two Dragon Ball Z movies with Cooler, The Revenge of Cooler and uh, The Return of Cooler, they are kind of, you know, so I guess Cooler is just not a character that exists. But, so, these characters, uh, Sorbe and Tagoma, uh, they basically decide, well, guess what? We're gonna have to revive Frieza or else this empire is gonna be destroyed. And they head to Earth to get the Dragon Balls and wish Frieza back because they can't find where the Namekians went. And that is Perunga at the end of the Frieza saga uh, teleports all the Namekians to a planet similar to planet Namek. And I guess uh, Frieza's minions were just having trouble finding that. Now, of course, when they get there, oh, they just cannot stop forcing Emperor Pilaf and his stupid little fuckers, Mayan Shu. They've just always got to be around. It was such a stretch when they were uh, showing up in Dragon Ball GT, and now here we go again with these with these fuckers. They're always they're so dumb, they're so comically stupid, but they're always involved in like the biggest shit. Like they are the ones who released Piccolo way back in early Dragon Ball. You know all of this shit. Luckily though, they're quickly out of the film after the Dragon Balls are collected and Frieza is revived. Now. A couple interesting things happen when Frieza is revived that I thought were actually kind of interesting. One is that it shows Frieza in Hell, and it's cyborg Frieza. Not quite so much, um, you know, organic, just normal Frieza. Because in Dragon Ball Z, I know it's filler, but in the episodes where PyCon is there, Goku goes to Hell, 
and he fights Frieza, but Frieza's just in his final form. He's not, uh, doesn't have any of those robotic attachments, but here in this film, when Frieza's in hell, you see the robotic attachments on him, which I thought was kind of fascinating. Uh, two, Shenron says that he could revive Frieza, but he doesn't want to, because Frieza was cut into pieces by Trunks before Trunks blew Frieza up, that... Uh, when Frieza is revived, he will be revived in pieces. Now, I guess it's not really explained... Well, okay, so they didn't know that there was a second wish, but it's like, you could revive Frieza, and then with the second wish, couldn't you then just uh, put Frieza's body back together? I mean, that's where you run into trouble with any wish can be granted. But they figure out that they could put Frieza in, you know, the the healing chamber that's used so often throughout, uh, Dragon Ball Z. Um, Sorbet is about to revive King Cold, but one of the dumbass Emperor Pilaf gang, Shu, wishes for a million zenny, which is comical because that only ends up being, what, uh, I, th I believe it would be 10,000 US dollars, because when, um, trying to, uh, like, compare U.S. money to Zenny, it's you move the decimal spot two spaces, so a million, a hundred thousand, ten thousand. Okay, so yeah, it, so so Shu wishes for ten thousand dollars, which is a wasted wish. Then Frieza comes back and says that he needs to kill Goku and Trunks, and I thought it was interesting in that they tell Frieza, like, no, nah, don't be stupid. Goku and the Saiyans, they have gotten powerful, they even defeated Majin Buu, and Frieza knows who Majin Buu is. Frieza says specifically that his father told him never to fuck with Majin Buu or the God of Destruction Beerus, which I thought is very fascinating. Uh, it's kind of like in Battle of the Gods when they established that Vegeta knew who Beerus was. So these are beings that pretty much everyone is aware of. And Frieza says that he will be able to match Goku's strength with only a couple months of training because he was a prodigy and he never really trained at birth. Which, I mean, that's kind of a flimsy premise, but whatever. We'll go with it. They, they could have thought of way worse ideas. And from there, there's a whole bunch of filler. A lot of shit happens. Um, the new character is introduced, uh, Jaco the Galactic Patrolman who is just like, you know, I guess a space police type of thing. Uh, Frieza recognizes his symbol and knows who the Galactic Patrolmen are, I suppose. And um, eventually Frieza arrives with all of his troops, and Gohan, Piccolo, Tien, Krillin, Jaco, and Master Roshi decide to fight the soldiers and hold off Frieza and his army until they hope that Vegeta and Goku will arrive while they are training with Weiss and kind of a little bit Beerus, but not really, on uh, Beerus's planet. Now, what's interesting is Gohan kind of has a throwaway line of dialogue that they don't want Goten and Trunks to find out about this because they might do something rash, which is when, as the events play out and, you know, Basically, the Z Fighters, they get so tired from fighting all these normal-ass soldiers, it's like, oh boy, you know, it sure would help if Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks was here, right? Maybe? Oh, okay, well, we could we could pass those two off not being there. Uh, when Tien arrives, he does mention about how he told Yamcha and Chaozu to stay out of the fight because he didn't think they were strong enough, which would make sense, but Yamcha and Chaozu are both a million times stronger than Master Roshi, so... At, at some point, I guess you're just telling me that Masaroshi has done a significant amount of training since the last time he was involved in a serious fight, which was, fuck, against what, King Piccolo, I think? Never mind that he still doesn't even know how to fly because Krillin drops Masaroshi down when he arrives too. And all of that is cool, but that also doesn't explain where the fuck Majin Buu is. Fat Buu should be there, and I... I didn't hear even a line of dialogue referring to where Boo is. It's like, fuckers, hello? Boo could really, really help here. Like, like that, that that's that's a little bit of a big deal. Majin Boo should have been there fighting with them. But eventually, you know, they tear through Frieza's weak soldiers, 
And of course, in very dramatic fashion, Goku and Vegeta arrive just as Frieza is about to start killing people off. Uh, Frieza stage one, after his training, he's actually strong enough now to where he punches Gohan one time, and Gohan is basically about to die if not for Piccolo uh, basically, you know, doing like a shock to Gohan to restart his heart and then Krillin giving him a sensu bean. If not for that, Gohan would have died from just one hit. A far cry from the 12th Dragon Ball Z movie when Gohan punches Frieza and blows him up in one hit. Clearly, that must have been a reference to that because that's exactly what Frieza does to him. Uh, so eventually, you know, Goku and Frieza start fighting. Uh, Frieza's in his fourth form. But Frieza is not able to touch Goku, and Goku has not even transformed into any sort of Super Saiyan. He is only in uh, just normal Saiyan mode. And eventually, Frieza decides that they need to fight with their full power. So Frieza goes to his new golden form, and Goku goes into the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan form. Now, how Goku explains this is basically after absorbing the god energies from the Super Saiyan god, this is what his Super Saiyan form looks like. Now, I'll be curious to see how they address this in Dragon Ball Super when they get to this part. Because, if you recall, after Goku reverts from his Super Saiyan god form in uh, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods, he actually does go Super Saiyan, but he doesn't have the blue-haired form. The blue-haired form, this is the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. And it's interesting that that's basically how Goku describes it, is that this is just now his normal Super Saiyan form, but now that he has the God energy, this is basically the form that he attains. From this point, um, Golden Frieza is whipping on Goku pretty bad. Goku is not much of a match for Frieza at this point, but Vegeta and Goku quickly reveal to Frieza that Frieza made a mistake um, by only just recently gaining this golden form, the golden Frieza ultimate evolution form that he attains, but he doesn't do any sort of training in this form, and so his energy begins to quickly deteriorate, and Goku is able to overcome him. Now, this is a theme that Akira Toriyama has used multiple times throughout Dragon Ball Z. Uh, you could think about even when... Goku first went Super Saiyan, and he defeats Final Form Full Power Frieza. In the manga, Full Power Frieza's no match for Goku. But in the anime, they do kind of play off the fact that uh, Frieza is beginning to run low on stamina, while Goku just maintains his strength. So it's a similar concept to that. And in the Cell Saga, when Goku realizes that going to, like, the you know, the Ultra Super Saiyan, the upgraded Super Saiyan grades, however you want to say it, Super Vegeta, Super Trunks, Goku realizes that those forms are inadequate, and it would be a um, much better idea to maximize uh, their effectiveness as a normal Super Saiyan and sort of master the form. And I guess Goku and Vegeta, that's what they tell Frieza, is that you did not master this golden form, so Frieza's strength begins to deteriorate, and Goku's able to overcome Golden Frieza. Now, at this point, um, Sorbet, who is kind of like hiding in the back, he shoots Goku kind of from behind. Goku wasn't expecting it. And this pretty much KOs Goku since it's a blast straight through his heart. He does manage to survive. Um, this was foreshadowed by way earlier in the movie, Weiss tells Goku and Vegeta their weaknesses, and Goku's is that he's too confident, and sometimes when he's so confident, uh, like, he's vulnerable to attacks, and that's sort of what happened, where Sorbet was able to shoot a laser, and even though, you know, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku is, you know, like, ridiculously powerful, even a weak little energy blast was able to get him at that point. That kind of didn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. And then Weiss... The weakness he tells Vegeta that Vegeta has is that Vegeta thinks too much while they're fighting. His thought, like he's thinking way too much, and this is causing him to be a bit slow. I suppose is what Weiss was trying to uh, tell him. So at this point, 
Goku is defeated, and Frieza tells Vegeta that if you kill Goku, I'll let you be the commander of my army. Vegeta basically says, fuck you, and then goes Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, which shocks Frieza, who had no idea that Vegeta was basically completely equal to Goku in strength right here. Uh, this is pretty much the first time this has happened in... Uh, the last time Vegeta's strength was either equal to Goku or above Goku would have been when Vegeta and Trunks first leave the Hyperbolic Time Chamber in the Cell Saga. Because when Super Saiyan 2 Goku fights Majin Vegeta, the whole time Goku was capable of going Super Saiyan 3 but just chose not to. So this is the first time that Vegeta has caught up to Goku in quite a while in the anime's history. Uh, now, of course, Vegeta quickly defeats Frieza, and then he's about to finish off Frieza, but he has to get in his last snarky one-liner. And then, at that point, it gives Frieza just enough time to where Frieza is able to blow up the planet. And only a few people survived because uh, Weiss creates an energy ball that protects uh, Beerus, Bulma, Krillin, Gohan, Goku... Master Roshi, Piccolo, Tien, and Jacko, as well as uh, Weiss. They all survive. And this is where it gets really bizarre, in that Weiss tells Goku that he can um, rewind time, and Goku says that if Weiss does that, you know, he will kill Frieza. Because he says, like, this is all my fault, I should have finished Frieza when I had the chance, and Weiss is like, okay, well, here you go, do it. And Weiss rewinds time, and then Goku quickly jumps in and shoots uh, Frieza with a god Kamehameha, and that kills Frieza. Which is interesting, because it leads to a nice little fight between Goku and Vegeta arguing with each other. Because to Vegeta, it just looks like as he was about to finish Frieza off, Goku just jumps in and hits him with a Kamehameha. But basically, that's how the movie goes. I actually really enjoyed it. Even though there were some obvious things, like, almost kind of like, uh, a lot of Dragon Ball Z has this, where it's just kind of moments like, what the fuck? Like, Majin Buu not being there. It's like, why the fuck is Buu not here? Or, you know, this little weak energy blast from Sorbet being able to KO Goku the way it does. It's like, come on, man. With how strong and sturdy Goku's body is, that shit would have just bounced right off of him. How many times in the show have we seen someone shoot, like, an energy blast and the character just stands there, eats that shit, and nothing happens? Like, we're talking about, Sorbet is, like, a low, low tier. Like, this dude is weak. It's not exactly fucking, you know, Vegeta shooting Goku from two feet away. It's just some weak little asshole. Overall, I'd say this is one of the better Dragon Ball films. Really, only maybe... I don't know, the BoJack movie or the Brawly movie, I think, are even on this level. Fusion Reborn as well. Uh, this definitely... The fights at the end between Goku and Frieza definitely, definitely deliver. Uh, Vegeta's fight with Frieza is very, very short. Uh, he finishes Frieza off in very short order. But overall, I'd say the fight is fantastic. I liked it. The movie as a whole, I liked much better than Battle of the Gods. And the fights, I also liked much better than Battle of the Gods. Overall, I, I would have to give this movie, I would say, a 9 out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, there's a couple minor nitpicks I've got, but that's it's it's just not... That's just how it's going to be with, with an anime such as this. Um, I think this bodes well for the series as a whole. Because I know the upcoming uh, series that they're making, Dragon Ball Super, the first saga is going to be the events of Battle of the Gods. The second saga is going to be the events of Resurrection of F here. And then the third saga will continue from this point. So I am very curious to see how the show addresses some things like the Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan transformation, and some other things. But yeah, I, I would say if you guys get a chance, go check this out. Support Dragon Ball Z. I love Dragon Ball Z. I feel like everyone loves Dragon Ball Z. The shit is good. The shit is hype. And I definitely would say it was better than Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods. So go check this shit out. What? Breeze has a new form! Goku! It's power. It's amazing!
crazy. Don't tell me you're surprised. Of course my vengeance must be satisfied. <laughs> <laughs>